if we can bring heart, sincerity, love, deep appreciation in our personal lives, the relationships, those that mean a lot to us, then what prevents us from doing that in our professional lives? Hi, everybody. This is Jason Mark Campbell. Welcome back to the Selling with Love podcast. I have an amazing guest today that I got a chance to encounter while I was doing a round of research, discovery, seeing if I was alone in the world trying to promote a different way of selling, one that is more enlightened, one that is actually coming from the heart. And I hit the nail on the head when I discovered this man who actually wrote the book Selling from the Heart. It's a powerful book that challenges the modern myths about how to approach buyers and how to close sales. I could not have this podcast be complete without having this man coming on the show because he is an expert in B2B sales and technology. He has 30 years experience in the field and he knows what it takes to be successful. The man has worked up and down the street for accounts of Fortune 500 companies and you know, I really like the fact that he is coming here to share some strategies that he's used on LinkedIn, on other platforms, and really has evolved with the times to make sure that we know how to sell from the heart. So we're going to dig more into that. Do we have what it takes to sell from the heart? Are there roadblocks along the way? And does it unlock a superpower in the process? With me today, Larry Levine joining me. Larry, thank you so much for being here. Oh, this is going to be awesome. And hey, so good to see you, Jason. Well, yourself as well. As I mentioned, we were cut from the same cloth and it's, it's fascinating, <laughs> you know. There's, there seems to be a shift, right? Like, I don't feel like this is by accident that I identified you as well as other individuals that we're all speaking around the same kind of a new age, a new era of selling that kind of ditches the old and starts something new. And I wanted to kind of hear what have you noticed over the 30 years as to what's going on in the world of sales and wh what should we be doing with this information? So, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, just before we get started, I'm just, a, as I was listening to what you were saying is, I'm a big believer in this. Things happen for a reason. You meet people along the way for a reason. And what I found when it comes to wearing your heart on your sleeves and things like that is like attracts like. Like-minded people and like-hearted people seem to find each other. It may take time. You never know when it's going to happen but I'm a huge believer in things happen for a reason and community around heart tends, it, it just tends to rise to the surface and it's almost magnetic in nature. And the reason why I say this is, and I'm gonna look at this if it's okay, Jason, through a sales centric lens for just a moment is, and, and I don't care if you're in large corporate sales and if you're a solo you know, entrepreneur or a small business owner, it, I, to me, it, this applies is sales has got such a bad name and rightfully so because for years and for decades sales people and sales leaders have done this to the marketplace is trust and credibility in sales is at an all-time low all-time low there's rampant skepticism and everyone thinks sales people are full of you know what so let's just get this out on the table and the reason why I say this is when you can get to somebody's heart as fast as possible, you start to unlock what's really going on with that person, what's going on inside their business. But here, here's, here's what I learned a long time ago. It's a mindset shift. It goes against the grain. When you wear your heart on your sleeves and you deeply want to connect with somebody to unlock what's really going on, you're going against the grain in the sales world. And you got to be willing to do this. And those, and this is what I learned a long time ago, is those that can make people feel so comfortable with them will soon start to make that person so comfortable they'll share uncomfortable things going on in their office. And the only way you do that is speed to heart. The faster you get to somebody's heart, the faster they will start to share. Here's the, here's the flip side to that. We have to be willing to go first. And if we're not willing to go first, they're never going to, they're never going to share what's really going on. I like the way you explained that because it seems to me in the way that I see sales as well now, is I've always been excited about the fact that we're basically agents of finding those problems and providing solutions if ever we do have that solution for it. Yet for a lot of people who are, let's say, impact focused, they're, they wanna do good business, they wanna be ethical, 
they would hear what you're saying right now and being like, yeah, that's what I want to do. That's how I want to sell. Yet it doesn't seem obvious that that's the way we can do it. And it almost seems like it's hard to get there because a lot of the information doesn't even speak this language. So what is it that makes us feel that resistance to selling, knowing that maybe one of the most effective ways is to do it exactly how you explained it, which is very human. I, I think it's the, um, it's the inner voice that every single one of us have in our head that how will I be judged? How will I be viewed? How are my peers going to look at me when I bring deep emotion to the forefront? And we worry about that. The reason why I say that, I went through it. Everybody goes through it. To me, uh, you know, in the last chapter, Jason, of Selling from the Heart, I talk about empty suits. And it's not to disrespect the sales world in no means. But I talk about People in sales need to be able to educate, engage, bring passion, excite people into conversations, connect with them at ways that nobody's connecting with. And you know what? That does go against the grain because how, how is Jason going to view me if all of a sudden I bring this to the forefront? We might know what's really good in our heart, but the little person sitting on our shoulder is going to go, guess what? All the other people around you are probably going to go, why are you doing that? And you got to be prepared for it. And, and this is where there's, this is where I think there's also three things that, that we all need to key in. If you want to bring your heart to the forefront, which I know we all do. And, and here's something to think about. If we can bring, and this is my big challenge to everybody in sales, Jason, is if we can bring heart, sincerity, love, deep appreciation in our personal lives, the relationships, those that mean a lot to us, then what prevents us from doing that in our professional lives? Let's stop and think about that for a moment. As we've all heard the saying, and then I'm going to get back to three things that I think prevent us from doing it, but we've all heard this saying before, the longer you spend in sales, the more you're going to hear this because we're going to get no's more often than we're going to get yeses. You'll hear something like this. Hey, Jason, you know, you're a great guy and all that. I don't want you to take this personal. We decided to make a business decision and move on from, right, you and your company. We decided to do business with somebody else. Jason, I don't want you to take this personal. It was only a business decision. But guess what? Today, business is 100% personal. It's a human to another human. It's a group of humans to another group of humans. Let's take titles away from all of this. The faster you can humanize what you do and make somebody feel comfortable with you, and you ask great questions and you bring intentionality and you bring courage to the forefront, you bring curiosity to the forefront, things start to happen. It's how humans connect. But here's the three things that I think prevent a lot of us from doing that. It's the lack of confidence. It's the lack of believability. Believability in ourselves and our messaging and low self-worth. And when we bring that to the forefront, People smell when we're not confident. People smell when our messaging's not up to par. And people will sense when you have low self-worth because it's how you carry yourself. And these are things that a lot of people don't think about. But I'm a big believer in this. The inner work that we do on our heart, the inner work fuels the outer success that we're going to have in anything that we do, in any career that we have. Here's my challenge. How many of us are willing to go down those paths to uncover what's really in our heart, to help us feel the success that we're all capable of having? I find it fascinating, especially as I was going through my own process of, of writing my book, that as much as I'm going through a lot of tactics, a lot of uh, strategies, processes of sales, they're really great, but at the end of the day, it's like you say, everything comes back to your own level of work that you've done on yourself so you can show up more confident with a little more self-worth, as you mentioned. And I was going to say, like, when you talk about showing up 
and, and kind of doing the first step and wanting to come from the heart when you engage in a sales interaction. Could you give us an example of like how that would go? Like, how does that happen differently than usual? So are we just going to a, a prospect and the first thing we tell them is about like, oh yeah, I'm having problems at home. Like, are we revealing that? Cause that doesn't seem the most effective. What exactly are we doing? What would be an example of that? <laughs> Here, here's the first things that come to mind. And, and um, I was willing to do this is I call it shock and awe a little bit. And it's not where I'm going to, and, and I said a little bit earlier that we have to be willing to go first. We have to be willing to share a little piece of who we are to get somebody to realize, hey, it's just another human sitting there. And it, and it can go something like this, right? Hey, Jason, you know, super excited to be here. By the way, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity to share some ideas and some insights with you. As this reflecting back over this weekend, man, it was a super great weekend. Weather was nice. My wife went to our favorite spot, you know, along the coast in Southern California, because I happen to be in Southern California. Uh, we stopped by our favorite burger joint on the way home. We stopped by our favorite wine bar. Hey, I'm just curious, Jason, what was up this past weekend? What was the highlight from your weekend? Again, you got to have confidence in how you deliver this and be willing to have that conversation go where that conversation goes. Now, I don't care if you're in small business sales, you're a solo entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. Even if you're selling into, you know, corporate executives, people connect on things like this, but here's where, here's where we don't want to dwell on. We don't want to dwell on this for the whole meeting. I like to be able to use this in the first minute, two minutes, and then transition right into why we're here today. But again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share some deep secret that's been in the closet for a long time and bring that out on the, on the table. And Jason goes, what just happened? Right. It's something that's relevant, something they can relate to something that they don't have to go very far into the past. A few days ago, last week, 30 days ago. You get what I'm saying? 100%. And I find it actually fascinating that you are using this in a technology field where I would think that a sales interaction would be the most dry, very transactional process. But what you're saying is that this element of personalization is really what needs to happen today to be able to earn business, to build trust, and to get that attention that's necessary for people to say yes and to move forward doing business, not with your company, but they do business with you. Oh, it's so spot on because I'm a big believer in this. If you can't pass their litmus test, they may not get to your company. However great your company is and what brand they've built, if they can't make it past you, you might be a salmon swimming upstream with this one. But he, he, here's why I say the things that I say is I love asking people questions. And I love asking executives and I love asking mid-level decision makers, uh, people in offices, anyone that I come across, what do you like? What do you don't like about salespeople? How do you want to be treated? What's great experience? What really ticks you off? The first 10 minutes of a conversation with a salesperson, how do you know what's really going on? Help me understand that. What's that look like? I'm just curious. Help me out. Here's what it all boils down to. They want to know, am I connecting and relating to a real, genuine, caring person? Or are they just there to sell me something? Let's stop and think about that for a moment. Two words near and dear to me is how well can I connect to somebody and how well can I relate to somebody? And if we have a hard time connecting and relating up front, I think then what starts to happen is then it's that salesperson and it's that buyer and it's all the friction that happens in between. But let's just think about what goes on in their head in those first couple minutes. Can I trust you? Are you credible? Is this person worthy of having a conversation with me? Am I going to be willing to be open and honest with this person? 
And again, it just goes back, Jason, to how comfortable can somebody make somebody feel that they go, I get what this person's cooking. I get what this person's throwing down. And this, all these things are happening rapid fire fast. I was going to ask you, knowing that this is effective, knowing that this is the way that you can sell and be more effective, is it something that's just recently been effective like this? Like going back to one of the first questions was that 30 years ago, did we have to operate differently? Has something changed? Because a lot of us have that negative impression of salespeople. I know I talk a lot about it, but I'd love to know from your perspective, like why is it that we have that negative impression that sticks in our head? Because salespeople and sales leaders have done it for time and time and time again. It's not something that's just all of a sudden happened. So here, here's what's interesting. Um, one of my favorite guests on the Selling from the Heart podcast is a guy by the name of Todd Capone. And Todd Capone wrote the book, The Transparency Sale. I love Todd because Todd's a sales historian. And when I say sales historian, Jason, this guy goes back to the archives and he'll go back to the late 1800s, the mid 1800s, the early 1900s. And here's what, here's what's fascinating. All of this people were talking about in the mid 1800s and the early 1900s about speaking with honesty and carrying yourself with integrity. And I remember one of the favorite quotes. I can't remember who the gentleman was, but I do remember the date. The date was sometime in, in 1919. So well over a hundred years ago, this person went on to say this. Everyone key in on this because I, I mean, they were talking about this a hundred years ago. If the truth won't sell it, don't sell it. Okay. Think about that. Fast forward to today, wherever you're at, right? Whatever marketplace you're in, if the truth won't sell it, don't sell it. Let's stop and think about that. If they already have a negative perception of sales, if trust is at an all-time low, if credibility with salespeople is at an all-time low, if they're skeptical, right, about everything that salespeople have to say, flip the narrative. Just flip it around. How do you want to be perceived? Watch what starts to happen. If you carry yourself with confidence and you're upright and you lean in and you bring intentionality to the forefront, you share a piece of you in the very beginning. You bring some passion and some conviction and some believability to the forefront. You deliver a message in a way that resonates, that you can connect with somebody. Mark my word, they will open up. Why? Because they don't get it. Most of the salespeople that they probably see are me-focused, product-centric. They're inward thinking. They're not outward thinking. And it's just, uh, it's just a position jockey forever until something happens. Flip the switch. We can control what we can control. We can't control what we can't control. What each and every one of us can control is how we carry ourselves, how we lean in, the tonality we use, the passion we bring to the forefront, the curiosity, the courage to change how we're viewed. And if you're willing to do this, Watch what happens to the conversations in the community that you start building and watch what starts happening to all the people that start talking about, hey, man, I just met this guy named Jason. You're not going to believe this conversation I had with this guy. Absolutely off the charts. I, I, I never expected any of this to happen. Watch. It does happen. But it's, to me, it's, it all starts with aligning the mind and the heart together. Here's what I do know. People will remember 100% of the time how you made them feel at that moment in time. They're not going to remember all the product-centric stuff you've thrown at them and all the marketing crapola that marketing gives people. They're not going to remember any of that. In fact, here's what I do know. Less than 10% of the time, 
10 minutes after you end that conversation, they're going to remember probably six to 8% if of anything that you shared with them, but they will remember 100% of how you made them feel during that time they invested with you. Stop and think about that. I think given that sales is also an unregulated field, right? Like anybody can be a salesperson. I think we find it that there's so many of them that are just mediocre and I'm being generous by saying yeah. mediocre. And so we get impressions of what is considered less than average most of the time. And the cream of the crop are moving up. They're doing some very specific accounts. They're not the ones we typically encounter on a regular interaction, let's say as a consumer. I would say most of the top ones are working in B2B sales, which is a very different kind of process where trust is at the forefront. So it's almost like we need to reprogram ourselves and realize like, hey, no, there is what is a level of excellence in sales. It's not what we've been encountering, but when we choose to operate from there, it doesn't come with all the negative baggage and perceptions we have about sales. Instead, as you say, it's trust first. It's doing this uh, from a completely different perspective than what we've been trained. Even in the media kind of highlights the negative salespeople like the Wolf of Wall Street, right? Which kind of brings me to this question I was gonna ask Larry, because you know, We've one of the salespeople that does stand out is kind of this like slick talking, effective salesperson. And I, you know, we can use the Wolf of Wall Street movie as an example where they become extremely effective at building a perceived trust and they're able to move product and effectiveness, yet they're using methods that are deceptive. Are there ways as buyers for us to protect ourselves from someone that actually is, you know, completely inauthentic, but they're able to convince the masses and like, what's going on there as for making them effective with all this deception. Yeah. So, wow. There's a lot to unpack there, but, um, I, you know, I'm a big believer in this, that, uh, sooner or later, everyone gets called out on the carpet like that, right? Fool me once. There's that old saying, fool me once. And here's, here's what I want everyone to think about is buyers are a lot smarter than you think they are now. They can sense it. They may not sense it right away, but think about all the buyer's remorse that goes on out there, Jason. And, you know, I'll call it the love them and leave them. There's a lot of um, what I'll call it transactional, I love you type conversations you're the most important thing to me at this moment in time. And then when the sale happens, they move away. And there's a lot of transactional conversations. There's a lot of transactional hype. But transactional conversations and fake sincerity is replaceable. Transformational conversations and transformational experiences are irreplaceable. And to your point, I mean, people now, especially with the advent of social media and all that, they're a lot more smarter. They have a lot more access to what's going on out there. And they can sense. And, and, and I'm not bringing a PhD level, you know, definition to this or any terminology to this. It's just real. People sense it. It's how you carry yourself. It's the body language. It's the eye movement. It's the tonality in your voice. It's how you carry yourself. And you might be able to fake it at that moment in time and do a really good job from it. But I promise you this, at a certain point in time, you're going to get exposed for exactly who you are. And there's a lot of empty suits out there. And here's what I want everyone to think about. It doesn't take much. I talk about rising above the sea of sameness or the sea of empty sales suits. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. But it goes back to this. How confident are you? How well do you believe in yourself? What's your self-worth look like? What's that inner talk going on inside your head? And are you willing to do the things that nobody else is doing? But we have fear of how we're going to be judged and so what happens is we go, eh, I'd much rather just do what everybody else is doing because it's safe. I don't have to worry about it. I'm sharing this with you because I walk through it. I walk through being made fun of. I walk through having people talk smack behind my back. 
And I said, you know what? I'm going to carry myself with integrity. This is who I am. And you're not going to change who I am. And I build deep, meaningful connections. And I chose to lead my life this way in sales. And you can either lead up or you could walk out. Choice is yours. But I'm, not, I'm never going to sacrifice who I am to please somebody else. But I'm going to show there's a better way of doing things. And I'm just a big believer that we can lead up and show people that bringing love, care, appreciation, and respect to the forefront does make a difference. Why? Because this is how we connect as human beings. You want to, you know, 2x, 3x your sales results? Then learn how to bring this to the forefront. Larry, I'm so happy that you're here and being an advocate for this because I know this is what the world needs. I think once we all start operating from this level, we start seeing a lot better products coming in the right hands of the right people, solving true problems, bringing real solutions. And this is what we're all about. I think that's really what we want to see. And I think with your book out, Selling from the Heart, it's one thing that I'd encourage everybody here to pick up a copy if you want to go deeper into these concepts. And I wanted to ask one final question here, Larry, which is, a bit of this catch-22 that might happen for someone who might be at the beginning levels as a small business owner, solopreneur, maybe an entry-level salesperson who wants to walk with confidence, that wants to have that self-worth, but they feel like their lack of experience and practice is making them not be able to overcome those blocks and feel like they need more experience, but they can't get it because they're at that stuck point. What would be a word of advice you would give for somebody who's at the beginning of their career, starting with sales, and want to amp up this confidence to be able to sell more from the heart? Uh, it's something that I wish I would have did in my 20s. Go find a coach and a mentor. Go find a business coach. Go find a life coach. Find some mentors. Build an inner circle of influence. Find people that are more experienced in life than you are and build five, six, seven people around you and watch what starts to happen and be willing to be vulnerable and be willing to share. I wish I would have did that in my 20s as opposed to I hired my first business coach in my 40s. And now here I am at 57 years old. I have two business coaches and three mentors. And I built a circle of influence that if I have a question around business, I know who to go to. If I have questions around life, I know who to go to. If I have questions around finance, I know who to go to. That's the best piece of advice I could give young entrepreneurs, young salespeople, small business owners just starting out. The more you invest in yourself, the more you'll be able to collect on yourself. Go find a coach and a mentor. Larry. Thank you so much for your time. This was amazing. And for everybody tuning in, one place that you can get started is by signing up to the Selling from the Heart podcast, where Larry actually brings sales experts who speak more deeply around processes and sales. If you feel like you're lacking a specific tool, you can actually go there and you can learn so much from the internet. But really, if you're surrounded by the right mentors, the right coaches, you understand that this way of selling is the way to be effective. If you've had your past experiences in sales with negative impressions, it's because you weren't dealing with a great salesperson. That's not the example to follow. Instead, as Larry speaks, the ways to do it is building trust, having respect, caring, connecting with the people, seeing that you can use these moments in the beginning to really connect human to human because that is how you build long-term accounts, long-term clients that can bring you with bigger clients and be happy and align, having integrity in the way that you sell. This is the message that we want to bring forward and I'm so happy that Larry, you've put together all of your platform to promote this message. This is also the mission that I'm on. I'm glad that I have allies along the journey and for everybody else listening, you know that you have great people you can look up to, learn from, and know that you are part of the solution, which is being able to sell from the heart. Once again, Larry, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was my pleasure anytime. I am your host, Jason Mark Campbell, and this is the Selling with Love podcast.